videoing here, guys. No videoing here. Shut the video down. Because I said so. And what's the man? Shut it down. Shut it down, sir. Now. We got to get to the point where somebody made a decision here to take an accredited press person and destroy their footage from a legitimate question and answer period and how batteries are, are become evidence and, and what what police investigation this was. I mean, they're... Perhaps the finest moment for America's media occurred, at least in my lifetime, in the immediate aftermath of 9 11 one They couldn't help but cover the heroes who were killed trying to rush into those buildings to save the lives of others. And eventually, even after within just a couple of days, it began to change. And they became victims. The victims of the Bush policy that allowed this to happen. The victims of the terrible intelligence that had been detected before it happened. And of course, in the aftermath of anything like that, you can always find family members so distraught people will say almost anything. And you can edit the tape to fit your bias with respect. And the reason for that is because people have figured out what they're getting in the front page of the papers, they're not facts. The news magazines are in deep trouble. Where are young people going for their information? They're not going to the cable news channels. They're not going to the newspapers. They are going up on the internet. I can cite for you, but I don't want to advertise for them, a half dozen of those blog sites that get more paid views per day than all the newspapers in America combined. And that is important for us when we want to get our message out. Pain, stay in that hotel. Do you have any questions? No. Uh, I, I, have, I have a quick question about the Second Amendment, if I could. It's uh, regarding Oliver North and the uh, continuity of government. If you could please elaborate for a second. What happens to the Second Amendment during a disaster or national emergency? Well, hopefully not what happened to Africa. Okay, but you, you did. You see the video yesterday? Yeah, they confiscated the guns. Uh, but my question is, uh, what exactly is continuity government? If you could elaborate for the audience. Uh, well, the National Security Decision Directive on continuity government requires that every step be taken to ensure that there is a constitutional civilian successor in the event of the death of the president. So therefore, the continuity of government programs, unlike what's up on the internet, require that the Armed Forces of the United States take measures to evacuate and protect that constitutional successor. That succession, of course, is in there. But, but you're, using, you're using the word constitution. Isn't, isn't the constitution technically suspended during this? And they can uh, basically go around it and confiscate guns, uh, hold people without trials during a national emergency? No, you, you, you've been reading the internet. This is the <laughs> thing about it. I, mean, look, I, you, I can. You know, my son is an attorney, uh, frequently goes a little ballistic because he sees some of the stuff that's up on Google about his dad. And one of the challenges about the new media is there's no editorial con control over what's up there. So I, I know the one you're speaking of, probably multiple versions of it from the so called American security. Well, it was, it was during the. Okay, okay. You asked the question. All right. the, the, there was an accusation, there was a program called Rex 84. And actually what Rex 84 was was a test of our ability to move a constitutional successor from Washington outside the range of the Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile in time to avoid him being killed. That's all it was. It was converted into something else by a lot of people's suppositions about a very classified program because we discovered that instead of a 43 minute timeline for an ICBM to go over the pole and impact and decapitate Washington, that there were Soviet bear and bison planes flying down the east coast of the United States, and the time of flight for one of their nuclear tip cruise missiles, which the Carter administration didn't tell us about until the Reagan administration got there, was only 14 minutes. And so you had to move all the helicopters closer, you had to move what's called kneecap. All of this now is classified. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, real quick, uh, given the knowledge that there were secondary devices in Building 7 on 9-11, would you support a new investigation given the fact that Building 7 was omitted out of the 9-11 Commission? One of the things that I have not is a grand conspiracy theory. A 41-story building in seven seconds uh, can, at 5 p.m. Uh, turned into dust let, let, let because of two me, office please, fires? Please, please let me make an observation. Okay. I do not believe that the government of the United States other than the ignorance
that's not what I was saying. I was saying with secondary devices. I said nothing to the government. I said there were secondary devices in Building 7. I made no connection to the government. I said we needed a new investigation, given the fact that it would take more than 16 men to plant, the, plant explosives in that building. What is your question? Would you support a new investigation, given the fact? That's all I got. That's all I got. No, all right. I thank, you. Sure. thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, you back to Rex 84. Yeah. You were asked on the Senate floor by uh, the Senate hearing by Jack Brooks about uh, concentration camps being uh, built in the United States. Uh, I've seen the video several times. Yeah. This isn't a press okay. conference. Oh yeah, it is a press conference. What you, what you need to do is read the full report, and when you're in Atlanta, when you're in Walsh, you're willing to lock up anybody just to get the rest. Walsh never indicted anybody for any of these so-called crimes. There was never an effort to establish any kind of concentration camp of any kind. And you, what you guys just watch my show on that, of Friends and Enemies. I watched you roll your eyes when Jack Brooks uh, asked Pardon? you about it. I watched you roll your eyes when Jack Brooks asked you about it. Let me tell you. And your, your, your buddy's well, there in the Senate hearing. I, I, I appreciate your question. Shut him down. This is not a press conference. It is classified. The, con yeah. the entire continent of government program is classified. The ability to move a constitutional successor to safety wasn't something you wanted to advertise to the That's why it was classified. That's what Rex 84 offers. So it's not classified for the American people because of the concentration camps in the uh... there, there was never an effort to establish concentration camps of any kind since the Roosevelt administration. Uh -huh. You know you know about that one? Yeah. I hear that some of those are reopening. Some of those are reopening from what I hear. This is not true. Would you show me you, you email me at oliver.north at foxcoast.com. Show me the picture. I'll put Indiana. It show me. Indiana. Show me. Right near the suburb of Indianapolis. <laughs> Most Americans would agree that it would be prudent to have a plan to provide for the continuity of government and the rule of law in case of a devastating terrorist attack or natural disaster. A plan that provides for the cooperation, the coordination, and continued functioning of all three branches of the government. The Bush administration tells us they have such a plan. They introduced a little sketchy public version that's clearly inadequate. Uh, and, and doesn't really tell us what they have in mind. But they said, don't worry, there's a detailed classified version. But now they've denied the entire Homeland Security Committee of the United States House of Representatives access to their so-called detailed plan to provide for continuity of government. They say, trust us. Trust us, the people who brought us Katrina. Over here is where they uh, searched us and interrogated us. So they took they took you out out in this area over here. Uh, that was very public. There was a lot of people around. Yeah, they took us over this corner. Uh, I was searched against this wall, right here, exactly right here. Uh, the guy that was fiddling with our cameras and making us erase all of our stuff was standing exactly where I'm at right now. Uh, later, we figure that they used this location because of the lack of. Cameras. Ah, let's go over here. Because you can see right there's the camera. 